Will Thomas Tuchel be in charge at the beginning of the next season? Welcome to this week's One to One with Simon Jordan. Don't forget to keep liking and subscribing and keep your questions coming in the comment section below. But let's crack on with this week's show. The idea of postponements being a, a real problem is a bit of a challenge for me because if you look at the fact that the Premier League was put in a very difficult position by the constant pressure from the media, constant pressure from the clubs to qualify what it took actually what it took to get a game off. And the moment they did that, there was always going to be a reaction from clubs to be able to game the system to get games off. So I'm not hugely bothered about postponements because if we can go through a season where for three months the season is closed down, whilst that's not an ideal scenario, and yet still complete the fixture list, we can get past these postponements. The integrity of the sport, if people are sitting there thinking that everything is held together by integrity and decency and moral turpitude and that managers don't game the system and that the system isn't being manipulated because now they've found out how to get a game off, they're now going to get games off, then you're silly in the first instance. Will Thomas Tuchel be in charge at the beginning of the next season? With Chelsea, you never know, so there's no certainty because Atypically, if they don't continue to win or the person in charge doesn't continue to win, and winning doesn't mean, in, in, I think in Chelsea language, the League Cup, it means the Premier League, it means the Champions League, and I don't even think it means the FA Cup. So I think Tuchel is a trailblazer and he set such high standards that if they come out of this season without one of the two big pots, which is the Premier League or the Champions League again, I wouldn't be surprised if they change him. Do I think they should change him? No, I don't. I think he's an outstanding manager. I think he's a revelation in some of the things he thinks and says and the way he engages with the media. I think he's been brilliant in his handling of Lukaku. What does David Moyes need to do to be considered for a top job? It's quite slightly diminishing of West Ham because there's a lot of people that say that West Ham is a top job. They're inside the top four. I don't think they'll stay there, but they're at the top of the league. They've got new investment with a new um, uh, co-shareholder with, with David Sullivan and David Gold, who I have little doubt will end up being the ultimate owner. So they have big ambitions. You can put aside the taxpayer stadium and how they got that and what it looks like. But, but Moisey is managing a big club. We've seen him go into a big club at Man United at a wrong time, a bigger club. And if we're saying that's the argument that people want to advance, what does he have to do to get one of the elite clubs I think maybe that time's passed him by and I think West Ham is still a great job. So I'm a little bit loath to say, because I'm a big fan of David Moyes, that another, another, another top blue chip ranking club will come along. But I suspect West Ham is a great job and one that David appreciates unless they stop giving him support. That is performance merit. So I can't ask the question, answer the question, sorry about whether he goes into another elite club, because I already think he's at a pretty big club in the first place. Ferguson, to me, is a person that's likely to have a job at Everton for as long as he wants it, unless he wants the big job. And if he gets the big job, my view is he probably doesn't have the capabilities to hold that big job down to put Everton back where they want to do or want to be and then you find yourself with a job that once upon a time was a job for life, you get sacked from because you stepped up. So in the short term, I think he takes the next four or five games, which give Everton time to think about what they look like, what they want to be, what their short term problems are, what their interim problems may be and what their long term solutions will be. And you need time to do that and you don't need the added threat of losing games um, because you haven't got the management perspective right or you're rushing into making a decision that might give you a short-term solution and then compounds the problem. So with the four games that are coming up, of which Southampton, Leeds, I think Newcastle are in amongst it, there are games that they think they can probably get points out of. So if you put Duncan in there and reward him for it, give him an incentive, 
besides the fact that I know he said in previous interviews that he it was the greatest honour of his life to manage the team, he should also be recognised because the big commodity of football is money. So give him 100 grand a win or whatever you want to pay him to be able to incentivise him to get this group of disappointing players to focus the right way to get past the initial threat of being sucked into something you shouldn't be involved in, which is a relegation battle, and then you give yourself time. Now, if you give him the next four games, and to the end of February, and the situation worse, worsens, then you've still got 14 games left to fix it with the, with the manager coming in that you've looked at over the next six weeks. So Ferguson for the short term, not for the long term. Why is Klopp so moany? I don't know if he is by everyone else's standards. They, you know, I think a lot has to be asked of the contribution of the media. You know, I know it's slightly ludicrous I'm sitting within the confines of it, but it's not about being in it, it's about how you operate whilst in it. And the questions are loaded and leading and they know where they're going with it. If Jurgen Klopp, I think the way that, the, the, that Jurgen Klopp and Thomas Tuchel and Guardiola Guardiola talking about players going out on strike because of lack of player welfare, Tuchel having the same sort of sentiments, Klopp moaning you know, about the same similar topics and fixture congestion and whatever else. But they're led. If it was more than 20% of the time the managers were voicing this inf this, these opinions, then I'd have something to say about it and think that they were moaning too much. But it's 80% of the time it's the media hitting the strap of asking a leading question and getting the answer. Managers live behind excuses. When success is there, they're the architects of it. When failings are there, it's everybody else's fault. And that goes with the DNA of a manager. I do think sometimes he pushes the envelope. I do think more than the, the sort of moaning about things and the constant observing of what isn't right for Liverpool, which in part is his job, I also think his attitude in the, in the technical area is something other managers have to be stronger in dealing with because he's a very strong alpha male character. I think the fourth officials have got to be stronger with Klopp. I don't make him wrong because I think his job is to push forward on the strongest attributes that he has, which is leadership and all that it embodies. But I also think the managers in other clubs have got to be dominant in their technical areas. And also, if the officials don't like the way Klopp is, they've got to be stronger. But as far as his endless moaning is concerned, yeah, it grates on me, but I have to be honest with you, a lot of what the top managers do grates on me because I do think they do get the opportunity to forget where they really are and what they've really got is big squads full of talented players with enormous resources, huge remuneration for kicking a football around. So I give it context, but I don't feel that Klopp is any worse than anyone else. So that's it for this week's episode. Now don't forget to leave me your views on fixture congestion, Thomas Tuchel and the moaning Jurgen Klopp, maybe. And, of course, to like and subscribe, and equally as importantly, leave your questions in the comment section below.